you were Amidius? Oh, wait, no, this is Amidius. This is Vigialis. Vigialis, ciao! Game 1 of the Grand Finals. The Aegis Allegiance Gauntlet. And how are you doing, man? I'm joined by my co-caster, OCG, the Irate Pirate. Yar. Enjoyed the game so far, man? Yeah, no, I missed a bit of it because I had to go put on the uh, Sunday roast for Father's oh, Day. Nice. nice. This is Father's yeah. Day. Yep, so, uh, how can you follow? Yep, already done, man. I've got this shit down. Did you, did you make him breakfast? Breakfast in bed? Uh, nope, I gave him a card and that was pretty much it. <laughs> well, I was lucky to get that. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. And you're cooking dinner and stuff. I feel kind of depressed yep. now. Yep, slow roasted leg of lamb. Sounds nice, man. Yeah. And we see the first bands coming out. Yeah, we, we see Zach and Elise being banned out. I'm pretty sure the Elise is a target ban at Wobbles as well. Been... Yeah, he's is, he is pretty scary on that Elise. It's always fun to watch. Yeah, most definitely. Stunned to repel. Uh, Zach and Malphite have also been banned out. I think this is the first time I've seen Malphite banned. Um, so it could be a target ban against Team Chow. I'm not sure what their most played is, though. I should check that out. Hmm. Still a very strong pick. We saw uh, we saw Malphite being played in the LCS earlier yesterday. Yeah, we did, and pretty devastating. Yeah, it didn't 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 help them win the game. No, TSM they, took it away. Didn't win the game, but it looked pretty cool when he ran in and you know failed to ultimate and then lost the team fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, no, Zach, Zach, a very popular pick at the moment. So yep. played quite a bit. Uh, Vayne also being banned out, which is probably a good idea because Ninkin Poop had a game earlier where he was like 13, 1 and 11 or something, so... Pretty strong. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, we are, we are coming to you live today from the uh, OCG Streaming Center. We are indeed, and we have lowered the quality of our stream, funnily enough. Uh, as there were issues with people watching it because it was so high quality. So that's... Yeah. I'm not sure if it's first or third world problems, man. That's a little bit of New Zealand for you. I, I, I think it's third world problems. Like, let's be honest. I think people in third world countries have better internet than we do. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised, eh? Like, the new Google Wi-Fi balloons they're releasing in Africa are supposed to have, like, fiber speeds and stuff. Yeah, that's Project Loon. But, um, no, they, they actually tested the first run of that in New Zealand. I know, I know, I wish I was there, but it was down in the <laughs> Wattwats, so... Yeah, exactly. But, um, no, very interesting initiative. Very interesting initiative indeed. So the rest of the bands have come out. Yeah, Oriana and Carthus have been banned out. So that's kind of yeah. surprising. Um, I know that Arkale, uh, who was formerly known as Raw, played a lot of Carthus as well as Cassidy, so that could be a target ban on him. Otherwise, it's just something they don't want to deal with. Yeah, we saw um, Dyrus use Carthus to a uh, deadly effect earlier today. Yeah, top lane Carthus, man. Really surprising, but I guess it definitely worked out for them. Like yep, yep. Game. It was, it was indeed. Don't fight on the dead Carthus. No, bad decision. You will have a bad time. It throws Skittles at you and it hurts. So we've had a instant lock Shen. So that could be tough, or that could be jungle. We've also got soft lock of Renekton and Varus. Um, so those were pretty strong picks. Uh, picking your top laner so early, which is I'm assuming what they're doing with Renekton, uh, is kind of iffy in my opinion, because it does leave it open to being counterpicked. However, if you are an incredibly strong Renekton, it probably doesn't matter too much. Nope, it's being swapped out to a Vlad, so... I wonder what he's going to go through and do. Tristana being locked in as well. Um, Super hyper late AD carry. Yeah, so is Vlad when it comes down to it. He does scale immensely in the late game. So that could be what they're aiming for. Some like, get to 40 minutes and watch us roll over your team. Team you go? Yeah, and let's be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the Vlad pick into Shen. If you assume that Shen is going top, that's quite, I'd say that's quite a good matchup for the Shen. You reckon? Yeah, we saw. We saw uh, Adems playing this matchup earlier. He was the Vlad in that situation, and mm. he did incredibly well as Vlad. I'm just gonna look up the matchup though and see what the crowd says when it comes down to it. Uh, so I've seen, I've seen especially at a, at a pro level, just matchups between Vlad and Shen just go very, very badly for the Vlad if that Shen can get out that early aggression. Okay. So, level one taunt. 
go straight in. Straight in and get your keystrokes down, get them low and just keep fully in. And if you get that momentum going as a shin, especially against Vlad and other kind of AP casters, you can really dominate that lane. Yeah, because most champions scale with, you know, gold and, and stuff like that, but mages, uh, they scale with experience. So if you yeah. can deny Vlad waves of experience, that's just immense in keeping him down. It puts you in a really great position, and then, you know, you go back and you start getting health, and not only is he, is he behind in experience, you're stacking health, so his, his spells aren't able to chomp through you. Yeah, I see, I see. So we've also had Lee Sin and Twitch locked in. So that's a really interesting matchup. We saw this earlier in the LCS, uh, Tristana against Twitch. Tristana did incredibly well. But it really comes down to the player's mechanical skills. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys match out in the bowling. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what support they put, what supports they put with each of these picks. Yeah, of course. Supports. See whether they go hyper aggressive. It looks like we might see a, another Nasus and a Fiddle Six is being soft lost. So I'd like both of these. Oh, switch to Lulu. Uh, I know you're a big Lulu fan. It'd be very cool to see if it is locked in. Um, I do love Lulu. It's such a it's such a proactive support. You're not sitting back, you know, just sitting there in lane, just waiting to see what your ADC does. It's a it's a support who for me can really make opportunities. You can get in there, you can get the harass with your help picks. You can get in there, you can, you know, use your glitter lance for a good amount of damage. And then also you've got that reactionary ability of that shield, of that ult and the polymorph. So big fan. Yeah, it's pretty much the best. I also really like uh, Lulu against Shen, because if Shen comes in with the Stan United, thinking he's going to get a kill, you do just buy that wild growth, and your Eddie carry is probably going to be okay. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a negation. And, and also, he, he, he jumps in, he wants to taunt, you probably off him. Yeah. You turn him into a harmless critter. Lulu's, Lulu's a good support. I wish but he was um, played more and competitive player. That squirrel does look familiar. <laughs> yeah, and it does taste purple. And it of looks course. like we might see a double AP comp. It looks like we might see... Oh, okay, alright. There's Charlie there Casters, Twisted Fate, and Jana being locked in. So, I can't tell right now if that is going to be a Lee Sin top or a Shen top. Because I feel like Lee Sin would do very well against a Vladimir. Yeah. Indeed. So it's going to be interesting. Very based on this last pick, I feel. Yeah, and there we go, Lissandra. Lissandra has been instantly locked in. That is confidence. I like it. So a very interesting team come from both sides, really. You've got, um, you know, the Vlad AoE, you've got the Lissandra AoE, you've got the, sh you've got the uh, Nasus to run in there and just generally be a nuisance. Then you've got the Lulu to back all that up, to speed up your Nasus, to knock up your Nasus. You've got the Triss, who's very mobile with that rocket jump and the buster shot. And then on the other side, you've got, you know, Shen, which is just always a nuisance. You know, such a good amount of map presence, the ability to split push, jump into fights, jump into, you know, make any 1v1, a 2v1, or a 2v2, or 3v2, you know, so much presence. And then combine that with the TF, with that ult. So, you know, a very, very mobile um, kind of presence-based team. Uh, from the blue team. Yep, and they've got double globals as well, and you really just can't discount those because they're gonna be in your face. They're gonna turn like standard trades around to you know three v ones or two v ones at any stage in the game, and it's gonna be really hard to keep up like that similar amount of pressure that both Gen and Twitch can apply to the map. So it's gonna be very worrying for Team Chow of how they're going to deal with that. And a big way you can deal with that is just non-stop shoving your lane. If you put them in a position where they can't leave their lane safely without losing a turret or a lot of CS, it's going to be hard for them to deal with. Yeah, definitely. And the team isn't especially fast. You know, you've got Nasus plods along unless you pop that ghost. Um, Lissandra with her, you know, with her blink, pretty good. And then you've got a uh, good old Lulu to speed people up. So the ability to switch between lanes isn't terrible. But yeah. um, it's, it's definitely going to be harder to keep that kind of global presence and be... You're going to have to be very aware of what's happening with those globals, you know, keeping track of the cooldowns, the timers, and be ready to quickly transition if required. Yeah, I, I agree completely.
Alright, so we've got a minute 50 left on the delay. We've actually seen a double AP comp coming out from the purple team with Vladimir and Lissandra. So it's most likely going to be Lissandra mid and Vladimir top. Against that shit, um, Lulu and Tristana in the bot lane and Twitch and Jana in the bot lane as well, unless we see a lane swap. And I'm not yeah. sure how well Vlad deals with a uh, 1v2 scenario. It sounds like it'll be very hard for him. Mm. Farming under the tower is a bit difficult. Um, yeah, but it really is. So, do you want to just walk through the rationale for the lane swaps? Why why, and when do you want to look to be doing right, lane swaps? If you feel like the AD carry in support lane is stronger than you, and you'll be missing CS or losing pressure on objectives such as towers or dragon, you can lane swap. And this, is, this works in, in two parts. So you avoid being put down, and you can also have a free lane to farm and shut down that top laner. So, for instance, it'd be more effective if the blue team did a lane swap against the purple team, because Vladimir is a worse 1v2 laner than Shen is, so they'd be able to press him back, keep his CS down, keep his experience down, hopefully get the turret, uh, whereas that Shen is probably going to strive in a 1v2 scenario, as he can, lost it so effectively with those key strikes, and it would just be globally better for them. They'd get more CS, they'd get more pressure on global objectives, and they'd have a freer lane for the Twitch, who might suffer against the Lulu. Mm. That, that's a bad example, because uh, Twitch against Tristana is a very even lane, but the lanes like uh, maybe Caitlyn against Vayne, you'd probably see a lane swap, or something like that. So that, that's pretty much the rationale for lane swapping. So is there never, ever a situation where you're like, we're really worried about the guy who's in top, He's we, we know he carries his team, you know, he's on his favorite hero. We need a lane swap, we need to have that ADC, we need to have that support in there shutting him down. Or is it always kind of the the calculus is based on the ADC matchup? Nope, um, if you if you watch the immunity matches when they were playing against uh, GG, uh, I know probably a lot of the New Zealand and Australia has probably blocked the memory out because it was fairly terrible. But Swiper was playing Trindamir and he can hard carry on Trindamir. So what they did is they pretty much just put everyone in this lane and dumped all over him. And I'm sure he still has like Vietnam style flashbacks to that game because he, oh, it was it wasn't pretty. As, as what I'm trying to get at, they did respect how strong he was as that Trindamir on that Trindamir, and they just shut him down. So yeah, you're completely right. If there is someone that you feel is going to be so much trouble, if you like let them have a finger, they'll take the entire arm kind of thing. You you can yeah. shut them down with a lane swap. So it'll be really interesting to see if these guys are going to play the standard meta, as it were, or if they will swap the lanes out and do something different. Alright, and we do have a look at the skins now. So, Muay Thai, Lee Skin, which is the best. Uh, Jack of Hearts. Skin to win. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Jack of Hearts, man. Underworld, Twisted Fate. Come on. And uh, Blood Lord Vladimir, the uh, legendary skin. Rocket Girl, Tristana, and Bittersweet Lulu. So, lots of nice skins coming out. Um, I think we've got about... Forty or fifty dollars worth of skins in this loading screen. Quite impressive. I think we've given away quite a few of these. Probably not to these people, but to uh, others. Yeah, of course. Pass. Of course. But no, um, I haven't seen much of my uh, favorite skin, uh, old uh, Mast Shaker, recently. <laughs> uh, I wish Shaker was played more competitively. The, the only problem is that he can't be shut down in the jungle. And I think that's why... Oh, if you're a noob and you let them shut you down in the jungle. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, I, I love Shaker. Such a dynamic hero. He is. He's so good at solo queue as well. He just punishes mistakes so badly. And with uh, double buff level 1, it's pretty OP. It is indeed. If you guys don't know what we're referring to, Shaker can take both the buffs at level 1 uh, by boxing up one of the buffs and getting his teammate to help him there and then running to the other buff and getting his teammates to help him there. So you can pick up both of them and be level 2 before the, the other jungler has finished their first one. So it's and very still scary. with smite up. It's, yeah, of course, and still with smite up. So he can get get there and invade another buff and steal that one away. So it's pretty cool yeah. to see if you know a Shaco that can do it. Oh, definitely. And if you ever if you ever see me in solo queue playing Shaco, then you'll know what I'm doing. Alright, I shouldn't have given in your username. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, and uh, we, we, we see them playing around the jungle. Yeah, so we're seeing a very aggressive evade coming out from Team VGR. Invading down this this red buff, um, they know, I feel, where Team Chao are. And we might be seeing a double invade here. 
Uh, both red buffs will be taken away. In the night. Yeah. Unfortunately, Team Chow are at a disadvantage. Uh, they are sitting on a ward, whereas they have very little to no idea where Team VGR are. Yeah, that's always a bit scary. So do you think we're going to see a lane swap here with uh, Janna and Twitch still remaining at that yes, red buff? Yes, most definitely. That's exactly what we're going to see. Especially considering that uh, Shen has already recorded his running bot. It looks like we are going to see the Twitch and the Janna go to the top lane. So ex exact, exactly what you kind of predicted there, the Shen having the better time at the TV1, we're going to see him actively pushing that. Yep, and it looks like Vlad probably knows that it's going to happen, he did have vision of that red buff. He's probably not going to say hi to Lee Sin, because Lee Sin hurts, and Lee Sin has a red buff. And uh, he's already level 2. Yeah, ouch. Mm. So Nasus is probably going to try to steal away this red buff. Which is, does um, VGR have vision on that? They do, but he's coming around the vision that they do have. So, clever play coming up from, I think it's, I think he wanted to be called Sir Limesington. He made a special request. <laughs> so, Sir Limesington. Fantastic. The first, or? No, just, the, just Sir Limesington. I think, I, I guess he is the first. The only. The first of that name? Yes. So he does oh. successfully steal that right away. Um, he is one creep away from level three though, so he does pick that up. And the pings go out, they know what's happened. They do indeed. Uh, so, Wobbles on Lee Sin, he could have gone from their red buff to his red buff and tried to make something happen, but he decided to secure his double buff quite securely. And uh, we see Nessus taking three turret shots. He's eaten three already for some reason. Oh, actually avoids the Shenton. A dev taking so much damage. Wow, yeah, that was a good amount of burst there. Yeah, it really was. And uh, Pro E on Tristan actually paid for a little bit. We we'll see Lee Sin coming down to try to alleviate some of this pressure because they really are doing a lot of pressure. Uh, Spirit Bite goes out as well. Limes gets another turret shot. So he needs to be really careful he doesn't draw that aggro. Um, the way that you avoid the aggro is as soon as the turret is about to fire, that's when you hit someone. That way it re resets the attack timer of the turret so it, it has to go through its full attack animation before it hits you and that way you can get out of it. We're seeing a lot of pressure going down on this top turret. It is, yeah. I think Twitch and John are probably going to be able to take this, not this wave, but maybe the next. Uh, it's next quite interesting to see how they're actually managing to put out more damage with the two of them, versus uh, three people the three in the spotlight. Line. Yeah. But considering it is two people holding onto this turret, and uh, Wobbles and Adept are so low, in my opinion, they probably need to leave, otherwise they will end up feeding First Blood, because they are going to go under turret at some point. Uh, Nessus has used all five of his HP potions, and it's looking fairly healthy at 520 HP. Oh, and another whiff torn. Yeah, Limes pulls aggro again, takes two turret shots, and goes down to 19 HP. First oh, does it, wow! That's right, to Tristana, and Leeson goes in with a nice resonating strike, but isn't got enough, uh, doesn't have enough damage to pick up that Lulu, so well that, played that by must, Tristana. That must have been the last tech on that explosive shot. Yeah, well played by the Tristana to apply that, and uh, bad luck for the Shin to not have that faint up on cooldown to try and mitigate some of that damage. Yeah, he just kind of sat there, he knew it was coming, but there wasn't anything he could do, and a huge amount of damage going out on Vlad and top. Yeah, I feel like this turret is going to go down, there is a turret minion this wave, so they will have that to tank. Uh, Nasus is trying to get to top, so it's whether or not he can get there in time to make a difference, keep the turret alive. Lee Sin is still sitting in his bot lane, and Tristana and Lulu are quite low. So it might be enough to keep them off the turret, and uh, maybe maybe make the trade in favor of Twitch and Janna in the top lane. And we see Nasus has reached top lane. He has indeed. The spirit fight is down. Oh, damage going down on Vlad. Will he survive? He will indeed. Yes, he will. That oh, poison is still ticking. He HP. He actually went down to one health. Oh, man, that is so close. Yeah. You gotta be mad. I'd be mad. I can feel Twitch's fury, I can. So Nessus is returned to the top lane, he's just gonna keep throwing down that spirit fire and uh, hopes he can clear these waves and keep his turret alive. It doesn't look like he can though, he has put the wither down on Twitch, it is decreasing his attack speed but I don't think it'll be enough. He actually misses the spirit fire and the turret has gone down. So first out of the game in favor of Team VGR. And, um, Looks like they're going to be able to trade these targets back one for one almost instantly. Tristana and Lulu pick up that one successfully as well. And it looks like uh, top line's recalling. We might see a switch back to bottom. Yeah. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see that rotation as you predict. And we're actually oh, and Shen going in hard. Here comes the TFTP and the Lee Sin. Gold card goes out and down goes Triss. Will they be able to pick up Lulu as well? That is the will. question. Boom. Yep. Dead. Here's a attempt at killing milky cows. Of course, that's the best thing to be attempted at. So nice destiny coming up from Twisted Fade. Uh, I think Lissandra wasn't able to put enough pressure on in the mid lane in the meanwhile. So while this mid turret is going to take some damage, you can already see Janna rotating up. She's going to put that shield on it and uh, try to try stop him from hurting it, really. Oh, nice long range whirlwind. Very impressive. And this Janna is just being frustrating as you'd like your supports to be. Surprisingly enough, we actually see both members, uh, the mid laner, the jungler, and the AD carry for TVGR. Staying bot lane a little bit longer than I expected to take this turret away, and they are going to get it this way. So that is 2 to 1 in favor of Team VGR, and they've got their mind set on these objectives, and it's really working out for them. Yeah, I'll be interested to see when they're going to start uh, trying to get that dragon down, because with that Shen, you can just kind of start that dragon knowing it, he's got that ult, and just let him jump in. Yep, so Death Stand United is going to be up in half a bar. And then he can be pretty much everywhere on the map. Twisted Fate has another 95 seconds before his destiny is back up until he can apply that global presence. So in a minute and a half, we'll see what happens. But um, we just saw there in the top lane, Shen just going hard onto that Vlad, and that's kind of indicative of what I was saying before. If you have a good Shen who uses his aggression well, I, I, I think he just has the capacity to, to bully um, Vlad out of lane. Yeah, he, he does. Um, Vlad is actually sitting on 31 CS to Shen's 16. So he's definitely done better in that 1v2 than I predicted. Uh, just in terms of CS. Shen yeah. actually picked up a kill and an assist, so the goal is very similar. But Shen did have a hard time, you know, giving first blood down bar under the turret. He's lost out on quite a bit of experience, quite a lot of CS. So uh, still having the ability to jump in there and bully that Vlad to drop that um, taunt drop the key strikes and actually force them back a bit is, is very impressive. Lime's taking so much damage to the mid midwave and Expunge actually picks him up. The Wither has gone down but he was dead and uh, Wither dead. doesn't really help when you're dead. Dead as a um, ancient Egyptian god. Uh, that, that's pretty dead actually. Yeah, I don't think many people worship uh, the old Egyptian gods anymore. I do Anubis Ra. And uh, we're seeing the three members mid AD carry and support of Team Chow pushing down this mid turret. However, Here comes Janna again. Yeah, Janna in the right place at the right time to put these objects down. We actually see a nice rhythmic strike from Captain Bobbles. Getting some nice damage onto this Lulu. Is it going to be enough? Here comes the gold card. The gold card does connect. We actually see a flash out of Lulu, keeping us up alive. Lulu really needs that wild growth at level 6 to start protecting people from these high damage single targets that CVGR are bringing to the table. And it looks like they are really trying for this mid turret. I feel like they have enough people here to get it as well. Although the wave clear coming up from Twisted Fate with that blue buff is really good. Just throwing those wild cards everywhere. They truly are wild. They truly are outrageous. Yes. And uh, Shin's Stand United is up now. And Vladimir is pressuring so hard. Getting some yeah. really nice damage now. Oh! Lissandra jumps the wall but gets turret aggro and gets taken down, so a one for one trade there in the mid lane. Bad luck, Raul does get picked up. Just if fake does take that kill away. Captain Wobbles was coming in to make a play, gets a nice resonating strike down. Will he go on? The Wither's down, here comes the stand united. Is he gonna live? He will live. Giant shield and boom. But Vlad, Vlad managed to get out quite a bit of damage on that Shen, so he came in with very low health, so no really real ability to make a play there, even though Nasus once again took a huge number of tower hits. Nice. So Vlad is now just pressuring the stuff there, getting some free CS for the first time in a, a very long time since the 2v1 lane. So he's going to be pre pretty happy about that. Uh, Lime's actually got away on very little HP there, eating three turret shots. So he's probably glad that he got out as Shin was teleporting in, but as you say, he came in very low. But he seems to like those tower hurts. He does, yeah. He's having a, a problem managing that turret's aggro. And Twitch is actually trying to get this Lulu. Has to back up though as Sandra and Nasus do arrive to try to alleviate some pressure. And Blue Tower goes down. Well played. That was uh, Vlad picking it up in the mid lane. Yeah, that consistent pressure has really worked out for him. He's just sat top, 
farmed along, got his items in, and now he's just pushing that lane. Yeah, and Tristana's actually sitting on enough gold to complete her BF sword. So she really needs to go back at some point and pick that up. Uh, the Twitch is still a little bit away from it, so I'm quite surprised that the Tristana is actually leading over the Twitch in terms of gold, considering that it feels like Twitch has been all over the place and, and doing a really good, good job. Yeah, and there's only a 500 gold um, difference between these two teams at the moment, so they are very close, even though it's 4 for 2. Yeah. Lissandra actually coming in, follows the core and gets a really nice hold on the Twitch effect. Going down there. Huge amount of damage, the Vlad goes out onto two members of VGR, the damage is going out on the Twitch, Lee Sin jumps in with some very nice kicks, can he finish the deal? Goes over the wall with a nice safeguard, he's now going on this Tristana, that's another nice resonating strike, he throws it in as well, but, Ooh, but she jumps away and a huge amount of damage going out onto Twitch, but he manages to turn around and pick up that Lissandra with Leeson's help. Lovely resonating strike, and BOOM! Down goes Tristana, and he safeguards away over the wall to a ward. What great mechanics from Captain Wobbles, and that's why I love watching him play. Oh, he's coming back in. He's not happy with just one kill. Oh. Shut down. Down. Chinatown. And Sir Limesington doing great job on that Nasus gets a nice siphoning strike off. Meanwhile on the top lane, however, I am Ademt has just shut down the secondary turret and uh, picking up some nice DS. He's actually got a phage at the moment and it's looking pretty strong. However, Wong's is bringing the damage. They are trading one to one. Let's see who wins this duel. And it looks like Wong's is actually taking this one away, getting some really sick damage onto Ademt. The ghost has gone as well. Wong's is gonna chase this to the end of time. Getting some really nice damage off. He keeps firing those tides of blood, keeps firing. Here's the joke, here's the joke. Oh, oh the it was the flash! The how gussing that big fat wall proving too fat to flash over. Bad luck. BL. Breathe. Bad luck. But now he's got the OP um, AP jungling item, so he's he, he's definitely hit his power spike in. He knew that. He knew he was ready to go in and cause some damage. And here we go, Lisa, and he drops out his ward. Preparing to safeguard through to kick him out, but nice can't one. quite get it out because of the whimsy. Yeah, Milky Cow showing off his uh, reaction timing, getting a nice whimsy off to stop the insect kick. And we've actually got Twitch stuffing around. Oh, oh but he's been seen! Cassandra goes over the wall as well. Cassandra does have an ultimate and a ignite up. They both go down to the Twitch, and Twitch has gone down. It looks like Absolutely, Mouse is the stand United comes out. Not sufficient That's... though. No. If a Wither comes out, that could be the end of Arcale as well. He does have a lot of move speed, but he, he is going to get away. Nice play. But very nice pickup for Team Chow. Two for nothing. It really is. And this turret is going to go down to the mid lane as well. Shen's actually come back, and he's gone top instead of mid lane to help out. That's probably a good idea. Even though he is a Shen and he is pretty tanky, I feel like the four members that are up from Team Chow probably could bring him down if he showed his face. So why is, why is the decision to back off and to get some fun while it's team respawn? This does leave Dragon wide open now, so it's going to be inter interesting to see whether they go for that. Try pick it up, expand the gold lead, but here comes the destiny. And the TF applying that pressure. He hasn't he made sees. it. But there we go, he comes in, and he's one, one deep. Oh, that was, a, that was a bit of a misstep. He's Gating into four back. members of their team. Yeah. And it looks so, like they are going to do Dragon now miscalculated where his team was and they're just backing off dragon um it's probably okay if that let that one go as they they did a very successful push they got two turrets and they picked up a winning team fight and then an extra kill on the twisted bay so they're gonna be so happy with themselves as the result of that that's definitely a momentum shift we saw the game was pretty pretty even with um vgr hitting kills and now it's actually swapped to the other side of it we see that team chow is now ahead in kills and one turret ahead and they've got that gold lead so it's going to be interesting to see what vgr can do from this position from the fact that they are behind now that and they know they're behind it's definitely a bit of a mental edge for chow when you know that the other team knows that you're in the driving seat at the driver driver's seat at this point in time it is and from what I've seen, uh, Team VGR haven't been behind much this tournament, so this is probably an unfamiliar position for them. So it'll be really interesting to see how they manage this, and uh, if, if they are as good in, at a disadvantage play than they are from an advantage play. 
And we just saw them pick up dragons, so that's definitely one step in the right direction. Lee Sin just kind of sneaked that out. Yeah, Jano is standing over the wall at the dragon pit and throwing shields and other nice things as a support onto the Lee Sin to make his job easier. And I uh, think that, that gold will definitely help out, um, bringing the gold to a 700 difference, now 800, in favor of Team Chow. Yeah, and the reason why that last team fight went so badly was because Twitch was in their stealth, but didn't realize that the Lulu actually had oracles. So he was out of position, stealth, and that enabled Chow to just dive their whole team on there, to get that Lissandra ult down, to absolutely melt that Twitch, and then when um, Lee Sin tried to come in to save him with the safeguard, to put those kicks and those slows down, it actually got him killed as well. Yeah, so... So a bit unfortunate there in that position. Really was. Uh, Raul and Lucinda has now finished throwing his hour glass and Captain Wall was actually getting split out! And it's Just blown absolutely up. crushed. And one ult from Lissandra. That frozen tomb went down, 1.5 seconds worth of CC, and Raul got deleted from the map. And the half's just fashion. Yeah, so this this is not typical of VGR's play. We're, we're really seeing kind of... That kill was definitely down to just um, a lack of map awareness, a lack of vision on the map. He didn't know that five members of the of the team had actually made their way through there. And you think that, you know, Volf has played so well throughout this tournament with his ward coverage, with his support, that he would have had that down. But he hasn't really had an opportunity to kind of get out of his base and get those wards down because they have been on the back foot. This is true, but you also have to give props to Milky Cow for having that oracle. They knew that the ward wasn't there and then they knew that they could take advantage of that lapse in map awareness uh, and, and map vision. So. They were punished very hard for not having a ward there. Definitely, and that just shows the importance of that support getting out that early oracles. Yeah, and uh, Lee Sin just fires a blind Q into that bush and spots the team camping there. So, they're probably pretty unhappy with that. And uh, they're now clearing wards around Baron, but there's no vision from VGR there just yet. However, there is now, as uh, both support comes in with a couple of wards. Yeah, and it definitely would be quite a risky pay play at this point in time to try um sneak out a Baron. Yeah, I think Nexus is tanky enough to do it, especially especially if he uses that Fury of the Sands as ultimate, but not when five members of the team could come down and check it at any moment. They really need to wait until people are out of position or they got a couple of kills before they even start thinking about that. You're correct. Yeah, and definitely VGR is going to be just hyper alert at this point in time. They're going to be really keen to kind of get back some of that momentum. So catching them out of Baron is going to be um, high on their priority list. Yeah, and Baron is the biggest news guy. If you go there and you're not prepared for what's going to happen, you can really make or break games. And you see so many teams throw away their advantage or, you know, go even worse into a disadvantage because they choose to do Baron. So it's going to be really interesting to see when these teams do try to do it and uh, if, if they do it before they are ready. Yeah. Very nice juke on the kick there. Yeah, it was. Uh, Lee Sin didn't have vision of the Lulu, but the Lulu did have vision of the Lee Sin. And uh, Shen is now split pushing top. His stand unit is up. So someone will either need to answer or put pressure on the map somewhere else so the Shen has to come back. Otherwise, yeah, we can see Turret or Inhibitor go down to the Shen. That seems like a really good option at the moment. They know they're behind. They just want to kind of outplay each Chow here, try to split their team up, make them have to respond to that Shen, maybe even drop the TF, TF off to another lane and play just super conservative with the Twitch, Lee Sin, Jalen combo and really just make them make them move from being proactive in the decision makers into the game to being reactory. Yeah, we Re actually see... Reactionary. <laughs> we actually see four ninjas of Team VGR be able to pick up the mid turret. Uh, Tristana was slightly out of position and Vlad can't teleport like Shen, so... Vlad actually oh, this could be very dangerous here. Yeah. He should be able to dash over the wall, safeguard two of them, and they should be out unless they pop a whole ton of flashes here. Wow, Leeson actually steals the red buff away from the Tristana over the wall. Incredible play. Very nice resignating strike, but the team's very split here, all retreating in different directions. This could be very dangerous. Yeah, but and they do not push. They don't? And Lulu was clearing every single word on the way. They could really get away with the Sneaky Baron here. I feel like this is the time for them to do it. Three people are recalling. Uh, Twisted Fate is coming up. Lee Sin is coming up. But okay. Both the global ults are up, though. So they do have quite a strong ability. There you go. There goes the Destiny. They know what's happening. They know what's up. Yeah, good use of the Destiny as well to, to try to find them and make sure that they aren't doing this Baron because that could be game-changing game, game changing if 
Team Shadow just left for free. Yeah, definitely. And combining that destiny with the Shin Hulk, boom. Package yeah, to love it. It would hurt. It would hurt a lot. Lots of pings going down, I'm trying to get this Twitch to back up. Uh, Twitch has gone in stealth. Just looking at itemization, it's all fairly standard at the moment. Um, it looks like Shin is going for a Spirit Visage next. And he does have that Phage. I feel like the new Phage only builds into Trinity Force. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Trinity Force Shin in this game. So what, what builds into Frozen Melt? Uh, I'll look it up. You. I think, yeah, it's some, some strange item now. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's Giant Spout and a couple of other bits and pieces. Yeah, I like that they changed it because Frozen Melt's such a hard item to get. A uh, Ruby, Crystal, Pickaxe, and Giant Spout. Those are good. Yeah. Strange, unpopular item. And then Unitrinity Force is better than ever with that new Move Speed Boost. Everybody loves a bit of Move Speed Boost, especially if you're playing Race Car Yark. <laughs> oh god, the People's Whispers build. Mm, haven't seen it work. No. I've seen it. I haven't seen it work though. <laughs> Pardon me? And the dragon is now the focus of both these teams. Lee Sin looking very keen for the dragon over the wall. Lands the resonated strike. Extra skill the And the crowd goes wild. Wobbles the cat jumps straight out. Safeguard the flash. Are they gonna get out of here? I think they are. They are. Jana goes down to the um, Tristana, but still um, highly worth it. That was an oh. unbelievable steal. And we actually see them transitioning to Baron here. They know that they've picked off the Janna. Leeson's low. He can't fight here. They're going to go try to take it. And they're probably going to be successful. They will indeed. Uh, Tristana does have the blue to the room thing as well as the BF sword. Nasus is so naturally tanky. He does so much damage. He steals Baron's AD. Uh, these are all good things when you're thinking about a Baron fight. Baron already does the drop the ult. Lovely, lovely gold card negating the um, Blake from Lissandra. Great taunt from that Shin. Damage going out. Shin does go down, but Baron is wrecking people in that Baron pit with two members very low. Are they going to continue to engage? Twitch goes in getting a lot of damage out on the um, Nasus. The big whimsy thingy isn't enough to save him. And here comes Lee Sin. Lovely resonating strike onto the Vlad, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. No. Very nice exhaust. I think that's going to be enough to get Wobbles out of there. I think Wobbles is out. Uh, Tristana does have Flash, but she's not going to use it unless she's absolutely assured of the kill. And nice tornado to peel away, and they're going to get out. However, that was a one Baron fight, and a Baron for Team Chow. And they're looking good to take this game away. Yeah, it was a three for two trade. And, you know, getting Baron buff off two people is quite important, but at the end of the day... Baron, Baron was kind of left alone there for a while, did quite a bit of damage to um, Team Chow, but nobody was really in any position to steal it, so they were quite comfortable just taking their no, time. Like, even if they did try to steal it, their smite was still running back to Baron. Uh, they did so well. Lee Sin stole the dragon, but he got away on him about 15 HP, and he had to go back, he had to recall, and run all the way back to the Baron pit. He doesn't have the luxury of teleporting like Shen or Twisted Fate. And no. Without the smite there, that there was no way to secure that Baron, and Nasus did pick it up for his team, and the Baron buff is going to be so effective. And these team fights were already so close, Baron buff might be the edge that Team Chow needs to take a decisive victory. And the gold lead isn't huge, you know, 33.8 to 36, that's that's not insurmountable, it's a 2.2k lead, but um, that Baron buff and Li Sir Limesington, is that what we're meant to call him? That is what we're meant to call him. It's getting reasonably big. He's he quite is. tanky. He's already got that lock of the Iron Solari, so the cooldown reduction is there. He's probably going to be opting for another big tank item after this, probably a Spirit Passage. And then we'll see where he goes from there. But he's very tanky at the moment. Definitely the, the main tank for his team, all things considered. Mm. And we're also seeing the Tristana pull quite a bit away from the Twitch. She's got, you know, a good whack more CS, 37 CS to be um, precise, and then 8 kills to 2 kills and equal assists. So she's she's getting quite scary. We might actually see a base race here. Four members of EGR are running up the mid lane. Twi uh, Shen is in the top lane. And I think we might see the, the fabled base race. Both teams are running straight at each other's towers. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether they leave. Oh. Jana's recalling to go do some diffing. Are they going to leave Twitch mid to try on oh, no, it? Twitch is coming up as well. So it looks like they're just looking to trade bot and herb. 
uh, to top and hit. Oh, and, it, and it actually looks like they're going to continue on and try just end it right here. Nasus has popped his ult. Jana knocks the back with her hers, and um, I, 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 I think it's it's going to be close. I think Team Jana might have it. Both, both times are down. The Nexus is just taking so much damage. The Nexus is up for both players, and Team Chow take the victory with this base race. Amazing play. Very, very close, though. So I'm so surprised that VGR forced that base race uh, when the gold was so even. I know Baron had just been picked up by Team Chow, but that isn't an insurmountable object. That, that's something that you can wait out, that, that buff can go away after a couple of minutes, and the team fights can restart again like normal. But uh, they forced the base race, and unfortunately, Team Chow were already in position for it, and they pushed straight to Nexus. A <laughs> pretty exciting end, though. It really was an exciting end. I think that's the first base race I've seen in a tournament like this. Yeah, and... Like, it obviously didn't work out for VGR, but at the same time, Twisted Fate's ult was up there at the end, and it, and it makes me kind of wonder, could they have pushed that harder? Could they have committed even more thoroughly to that base race? Because it, it, it did look a bit confused, you know, Twitch sat around at mid for a little bit, TF still had his ult up, I don't know when that came off cooldown, but um, it was, they, they did only have that base turret to get down, and um, Chow did have the secondary turret, and the base turret, and that didn't have to get down, so... Yeah, Nasus is pretty good at working turrets as well, Siphoning Strike does.